The star of the show when it came to ASUS Systems is definitely the Transformer Book Duet TD300. It is capable of running as, well, it says Duet, but really it's more like a, a quad mode device. It can run as an Android tablet, as a Windows 8.1 tablet, as an Android clamshell, or as a Windows 8.1 clamshell, and you can switch between the OSs simply by pressing a single button. So yes, friends, there is an app for that. So whether you have an application that you prefer on Windows 8 or whether you have an application you prefer on Android, you can switch to it pretty much effortlessly. Both of the OSs are running on the Intel Core i3, Core i5, or Core i7 processor that is built into the tablet portion. In fact, pretty much all of the hardware is in that 13.3 inch Full HD tablet portion with only expansion ports, the keyboard, and an additional hard drive for storage in the bottom transformer dock unit. This has been making a lot of waves at the show. This is Asus's first Republic of Gamers branded monitor. Now that brand for Asus, I mean they've had gaming monitors before, but that brand for Asus generally is reserved for the no compromises products. You know, like an ROG motherboard isn't, isn't just good for gaming, it's good for overclocking, it's good for, it has all the features and everything it could possibly have. So this is intended to appease pretty much anyone. It also happens to be the world's first 2560 by 1440 G-Sync monitor, which makes it make a ton of sense to me because particularly when you're running a high-end card like many gamers would be, you're not going to run into that sweet spot where G-Sync really makes a difference, which is when you're running in that sort of 70 FPS and sometimes dipping to 45 or 50 and you'd have V-Sync going on and off and tearing coming and going away. You know, you're not really going to run into that that much at 1080p, whereas at 2560 by 1440 in many modern games, you would. So this is a product that is extremely exciting to me. Now, I generally don't get too amped up about TN panel monitors because you tend to be making a bit of a trade off for fast response times and fast refresh rates in terms of the color fidelity and the viewing angle. And while the color fidelity and viewing angle might not be up to something like what a ProArt monitor can do, it's better than what I've typically seen of a 120 hertz plus TN panel, and we're still getting those nice fast response times as well as a nice fast refresh rate. Now, ASUS is advertising this as 120 hertz plus, but I, you know, no one's in here, so I fired up the settings and I was like, oh, okay, so it's running at 144 hertz this one anyway, but who knows what the finished product will. And in terms of the response times, we're looking at one millisecond. Now, because it's a G-Sync monitor, it's limited to display port in. That is the only input that supports that special standard from NVIDIA. So you don't have that usual plethora of inputs, but it does have a USB 3 hub, and it does, of course, have G-Sync, which does make a difference to your gaming experience. We've seen it firsthand before on our G-Sync test modules. So this demo right here is kind of a, a, actually a fairly real world example, even though it might seem to people like it's contrived and fake. And what G-Sync does is it enables you to eliminate the lag associated with running V-Sync, as well as the stuttering associated with running V-Sync whenever your frame rate dips below your locked frame rate. So you're eliminating lag and it helps you eliminate the tearing that exists when you don't run V-Sync. So it's basically like a hard hardware amped up, jacked up version of adaptive V-Sync, which helps enable the game, uh, games to look smooth and run with V-Sync on whenever you have an acceptable frame rate and then dip below and allow a little bit of tearing in order to avoid those stutters whenever you are not running at your V-Sync frame rate. So it's expected to come in around $799 and availability is slated for some time in the next little while here, which is extremely exciting. Guys, don't miss any of our CES 2014 coverage here. Remember our trip to the show is powered by NCIX.com as well as Corsair Memory and Western Digital. A huge thanks to all those guys because without them, we would not be able to be here at CES. We're wrapping up day two of our highlights of CES here on NCIX Tech Tips with a couple of, well, actually a few really amazing Cooler Master Half Stacker mods. Now, they wanted it to be customizable. They wanted it to be modder friendly, but I wasn't expecting to see anything quite like this, especially so soon. So this is a Half-Life themed mod that's got the water cooling reservoir as well as a flow meter up here on the top. So you wouldn't even have to be able to see into the case to monitor your flow and make sure that the uh, liquid is still flowing. It's also using a 
915R in the top uh, in the top up here, which has two 360 millimeter radiators and the pump, so all the water cooling is completely isolated from the heat generating components down below. So they've got a graphic that looks like a GTX 680 graphics card, so kind of mundane as far as the actual spec. But the point is the concept: having all the heat going in here, out here, and being taken away from the main heat generating components down here in the 925 in the bottom. So the first one was Blue Horse Creations. Now we've got one from Smooth Creations that's a Megatron mod. So they've done some custom metal fabrication. There's a 915 up here that's mostly just for, for looks as far as I can tell. It's uh, completely optional whether you put anything inside these cases at all. You can just buy them for show. In fact, it still has the mounting hardware for all the stuff inside. Then there's a 925 below which you could put a full system in or you could, I don't know, you could have up to four additional levels of dual 360 radiators and but okay this is a little bit overkill this isn't even something that cooler master officially recommends putting six cases on top of each other without any additional support but i guess the point is that if you really wanted to build a case that is actually taller than me at the highest point of the helmet then you could with the half stacker and we're going to close today's highlights with the i don't know what the theme of this one is the yellow and black sheer liquid sex appeal machine with the half stacker by PC Junkie Mod. So this has two 915s, one on the top, one on the bottom. This actually is a recommended configuration, unlike the Megatron machine. But speaking of recommendations, I mean, Cooler Master also recommends completely modding the crap out of this thing if it suits your purposes. So up here, we've got diagonally mounted Western digital hard drives in like alternating Velociraptor red and black configurations. Down here, here we've got a fully liquid cooled setup with some Kingston HyperX SSDs on display as well as dual liquid cooled graphics cards, reservoir, uh, reservoir and pump and all that stuff. And then down in the bottom they have actually completely redone the way it works to put four 360 millimeter radiators in there just basically like stacked on top of each other with nice pressure optimized fans and this thing looks absolutely amazing I mean there's parts of it that are barely even recognizable they fabricated stuff inside so that you can't even see any of the wires or anything like that what a fantastic machine so thank you for checking out today's CES highlights on NCIX Tech Tips don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this from NCIX.com